if I just want to make a shape, maybe I want to show different colors or something like that, I just have to come to my rectangle, polygon, ellipse, or you can use a pencil as well. So, but I'm just going to come to my ellipse, draw that out, and I'm going to come up here to my swatches. Now, um, here, you just want to watch out with swatches because there's only a limited set that they really give you. So what I like to do to just make it easy for myself in the beginning is to click on one and then do a new swatch and then double click on that and then this is where I can go in and play with that. And you can see the color type is processed and you can see it's YMCK. So if you do need RGB or if you do need a Pantone or a web color, you can do that here. Okay, so maybe I really like that one. And that's my color. Now let's see, maybe I really like this green for whatever reason. That's highlighted and I'm gonna pick this green up and it's changed that already. Okay. So just like other programs, you just use your eyedropper tool. You click on the color that you want. So maybe, let me just take one of these, put it over here. I'm gonna eyedrop this cat color. Well, that's really pink. So you just gotta watch out. But um, you can pick up colors from photos. I'm not saying they're gonna be dead on, but you can try that. Now let's say like I have these all over the place and I want to align them. And it, you know, it takes a, a long time to line things up perfectly. This might look aligned, but it's really not. So if you have multiple things and you want to work off your grid system and you want to align them without spending too much time on them, just click and drag them all and come to your align tool. Again, if, if it isn't here, it's up here, okay? So you just have to see where it's under. So it is under object and layout. So if I come here and I can align them horizontal centers and then I can do distribute horizontal centers. Or actually this way, there we go. So you might need to mess around to see which ones work but the line tool will save you so much time. And you know, you can do it like this. And so maybe you end up with something like that, you're just doing it really rush. Then what I would do, I would highlight these. I would align them center, highlight these, center. It's starting to look like a game. And then just make sure everything's correct. But that is how you can align things and make it look nice and, and flush to your grid system. So some of these are a little bit more advanced, but you can see some of them are, are just like your other program. So you have the pencil, so you can come here, you have the smooth tool. So if I make a line and I want to, here we go, I'll just make it black. And if I want to smooth it out, I'm just going to come here and smooth it out like you would do in Illustrator. So again, a lot of these programs have cross-culture tools for you to work with. Um, you have your effects here. Be careful with your effects. If you are trying to do a really interesting effect, I would probably do it in another program and then bring that file in. Do not bring in a PDS. Do not bring in a PSD or an AI. Try to bring in a PDF or a JPEG if possible. This will just save on file. So again, if you're missing something, window, bring up character, but work with paragraph styles. Do not go with color, really go with stroke, go with swatches, which are right here. Um, try not to work with a stroke unless you need to because then it can make the type hard to read. And again, how you make type is that you just make boxes happen. And with paragraph styles, remember, if you have all headers, then you can make those for your headers and you can just label it header one double click here, you can title this header, and then you can push OK. And InDesign will pick up on that and it will help you along the way. To finish off the saddle stitch, this is what the other pages will look like. So this is another document, complete, or unattached onto this. Now this is not two pages, this is just one page. These are just here to show how it's divided because I, I need to see where the half mark is here. But if I go to File, 
document setup, you can see that it's eight and a half or width eleven, height eight and a half, orientation horizontal, page size letter. So be very careful of that. This is my front cover on my right hand side, back cover left, inside back cover left, inside front cover right. One last thing to remember, unlike Photoshop in Illustrator where you might put images in and type and it will stay and you can give them to a million people and you'll have the same thing, InDesign is not like that. What you have to do with InDesign, whenever you add images or special things in there, if you're just working with something that's in the program, so say like I just kept typing here, these colors, you don't need to really worry about that. But if you have a specialized type, maybe something you found offline or you specifically paid for, that is not crossed on all platforms, you will need a package, okay? So if you have... So my suggestion is always to package. And what that means is basically you're going to be making a folder and it will have your InDesign file, it will create a PDF, and it will also create a folder with your images and also your typefaces. So if I ever needed to give this to someone and they don't have the typefaces, they can install them in their computer or they don't have the images, they're the wrong sizes or whatever, they don't need to worry about that because they have my images. So to make this work and to save, so every time you save you need a package. First you're going to save as and save it to wherever you want. Then you're going to go to File, Package. This is a must for InDesign. So let's say you're working from your home computer, you have all your stuff there, you don't save any of it on your jump drive or anything like that, you come to class for your job and work, and it's going to say, files not found, link files, anything like that. You need to be able to do that, but you can't because you need package. So you're just going to package that, you're going to call it whatever you want, and that's just more for the printer to know, but and then you're going to do that, that's okay, that's okay, just watch your type, but I know because we were just experimenting, things are going to be off there, and then so if I come here, this is, this would be my project, here are my document fonts that I used, here are my links, this is a rundown to the printer, here's my PDF, and here is my InDesign file for my current Adobe, and if someone has an older Adobe version of InDesign, that's for them too. One other thing, if maybe you're working from home and you haven't packaged yet, but you have the files, the images, um, on your desktop, but maybe you saved this not on your desktop, but in a special folder, it will say links are missing. So you'll come up with like a, a little warning sign here. All you have to do is double click this and then it's going to ask you where to go. So is it desktop? Is it a special folder? You're going to click on that image and then it will be like, oh, yes, that's where it's at. Forgive me. And you're going to be able to get those images back and everything will be linked correctly. So linking of images. So that is the very basics of InDesign. The big things again to remember are to bring in images, command D, or file place. Set up paragraph styles right off the bat. Work with your master pages and grid systems. Work with page numbers, colors. Don't be afraid to experiment. And remember to always package when you're done. File package. And there you go.